In this video we're going to look at series and parallel circuits. In a series circuit all the components are in the same loop. So with one lamp and a cell all in one loop of wire the circuit diagram would look like this. If you added in another lamp for a series circuit you have to put it in the same loop of wire like this. And you can keep on adding as many components as you want. They don't have to be lamps, you could add other things like resistors or motors into your circuit as well. However, a series circuit is not very useful because if one component breaks, none of the other components work. So here we've got a series circuit with two lamps that are shining brightly. If one of those were to break, that breaks the whole circuit and none of the lamps would light up. It doesn't matter which component breaks and breaks the circuit. It could be, for example, the first lamp or the second lamp or the third lamp. Wherever it is, it will mean that the circuit is now broken and all of the components will not work. In a parallel circuit, components are in different loops, which we call branches. So here when we're adding a second lamp in, rather than putting it in the same loop, we add a second loop of wire and put the component in its own loop of wire. The circuit diagram would look like this and you can see the parallel lines which lead us to call them parallel circuits. Or if we were to have three lamps in a parallel circuit, it would look something like this. A parallel circuit is useful because if one component in one branch breaks, the components in the other branches will still work. For example, if these three lamps were shining brightly, if the lamp in the first branch were to break, the lamps in the other two branches would still work. Similarly, if the lamp in the second branch broke, the first and the third branches would still work. And again, if the lamp in the third branch broke, the lamps in the first and second branches would still work. So these circuits are much more common because they're much more useful in comparison to the series circuit. You can put a switch in each branch of a parallel circuit to control which components you turn on or off. For example here we have an open switch in the first branch, a closed switch in the second and a closed switch in the third. So in the first branch we've got an incomplete circuit so whilst this switch is open the first lamp would not light up but the other two would. So we are in control of which lamps are on and which lamps are off just by putting these switches. And of course if we wanted to turn this lamp off we would open up this switch and if we wanted this lamp to shine again we would close this switch. So we are in control of which lamps we turn on and off. In a series circuit the current is the same everywhere in the circuit. Remember the ammeter is placed in series with the components in the same loop and the ammeter is what we use to measure current. So in this series circuit here we've got two lamps and I've just put three ammeters in to show that the current is the same everywhere in the circuit. So if we were to measure two amps of current here the rule says it's the same everywhere, so here we would also get 2 amps and over here we would also get 2 amps. In a different circuit now, I've now got a lamp and a resistor in my series circuit. So the current may be different here, but the rule is still the same. The current is the same everywhere in the circuit. So for example, if when we changed our components, our current was now 1 amp over here, it would also be 1 amp over here and 1 amp over here. In a parallel circuit, the current is shared between the branches. The ammeter at the top, next to the cell, will show the total current. The ammeter readings in each branch will add up to the total current. So, if the total current was 4 amps measured by this ammeter here next to the cell, then these two ammeters 
should both add up to 4 amps. And because we've got the same component, we'd expect the same current through each branch. So here we've got 2 amps through the first branch and 2 amps through the second branch. So each branch, 2 amps plus 2 amps, will equal the total current at the top of 4 amps. In a different circuit now, we have one lamp in the first branch and a resistor in the second branch. Let's say that the total current was again 4 amps. The same rule applies in that the current is shared between the branches, but this time, because it's two different components, the current is going to be shared unequally. So for example, we may have 3 amps flowing through the first branch and only 1 amp flowing through the second branch. However, the rule is still the same. We will add up the current in each of the branches and that will equal our total current of 4 amps. Now we'll move on to rules about potential difference and first look at the series circuit. In a series circuit, the potential difference is shared between components. The potential difference of each component will add up to equal the potential difference of the cell or the battery. Remember the voltmeters are positioned parallel to the components you are measuring. So the voltmeters are what we use to measure potential difference. And what I mean by they're positioned parallel to is that we have to have these separate wires coming down to connect the voltmeter. We do not place a voltmeter in the same loop as everything else. Whether it's series or parallel, you have to connect the voltmeter with these two wires going down either side of the component. So our rule says the potential difference is shared between the components. So if our total potential difference provided by the cell was 6 volts and we've got two of the same components, two lamps here, this will be shared equally, so 3 volts to the first and 3 volts to the second. And each of these will add up to make our total of 6 volts that we find at the cell. In a different circuit, if we now have two different components, a lamp and a resistor, the potential difference might be shared unequally, but it will still add up to 6 volts. For example, if the potential difference across the lamp was 2 volts, the potential difference across the resistor would be 4 volts, so that they would both add up to make the total of 6 volts. In a parallel circuit, the potential difference across each component is the same as the potential difference across the cell or battery. So if you had 6 volts across the cell, the rule says the potential difference across each component is the same as the potential difference across the cell or battery. So you would have 6 volts here and 6 volts in the second branch. And that would be the same even if you change the component. So 6 volts at the top would mean 6 volts across the lamp and 6 volts across the resistor. Hi guys, if you enjoyed that last video then please click on the screen to subscribe. You can also find all my videos in one place at gccrevisionmonkey.com. If you're a teacher, check out the Key Stage 3 package at sciencesurgery.com. It contains all of the Revision Monkey videos as well as loads more Key Stage 3 resources.